Welcome back, cloud enthusiasts. Please take a moment to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to be notified of new tutorials. If you like the video, please feel free to share with your friends. If you're an engineer tasked with migrating from a private cloud to the AWS cloud, you need to familiarize yourself with how public cloud works. This tutorial will explore an AWS account and how it provides isolation for the applications and their associated data in the public AWS cloud. Cloud platforms are inherently multi-tenant. So is AWS cloud. In multi-tenant platforms, tenants run their applications on shared infrastructure. Think of it like a pitcher filled with water. When someone wants to drink, they first pour water into the glass. Although multiple people can drink water from the pitcher, the glass provides water for their individual use. The picture is analogous to a shared platform, whereas each individual glass represents the isolated boundary. You need an AWS account to use services in AWS's public cloud. These AWS services share the same underlying infrastructure. However, each tenant's resources are isolated from others using the boundaries defined and enforced by AWS account. AWS account creates a logical boundary to provide isolated environments by enforcing permissions that prevent cross account access. Therefore, resources provisioned in one account cannot access resources in another AWS account unless explicitly allowed via a trust relationship. For example, EC2 instances launched in different AWS accounts may be running on the same underlying hardware, but these instances cannot cross boundaries enforced by the AWS accounts to access each other's environment. Besides enforcing permission boundaries, AWS accounts also provide cost boundaries for reporting and billing purposes. So cost incurred by services in an AWS account is calculated only for the resources consumed in that particular account. Another thing to keep in mind is that AWS enforces service limits at the AWS account level. For example, you can only have 100 S3 buckets per AWS account by default. So if you're provisioning resources via some automated process, you have to make sure you're not exceeding service limits. When you create an AWS account, a unique ID is assigned to it, and a root user is also created that has access to all the AWS services, including billing. For security purposes, you should always add MFA to the root user account. Additionally, as a developer, you may be used to having multiple environments for your development, testing, and production. In order to implement a similar strategy in the AWS cloud, you can use multiple AWS accounts, one for each of these environments. This will allow you to have tighter controls in place for your production AWS accounts. This concludes our video on understanding AWS accounts. To summarize, you need to create an AWS account 
to use AWS's cloud services. Thanks for watching.